Hello, how are you doing here? In this video, we're going to talk about a special, a special law that I really enjoy, and this is Newton's law of cooling. Of Newton's law of cooling. So, so in this circumstance, this is important for us to to think about this, and it doesn't matter, you know, what what we have. But if we have some, if we have some, well, we'll just look at some pot here, and in the pot we have some water. So we have some water. Some water, some H2O, and if we put something that's hot, if we put something that's hot into the water, it's going to increase the temperature of the water. The water goes up. So Newton's law of cooling is going to be synonymous, or it's going to work with Newton's law of heating. So when something is cooling, then the heat that is being lost by that object that is being cooled will be gained by something else. So, so it, it's sort of it's sort of something that works in tandem. What doesn't happen without the other? So, if something's being cooled, the heat that's being lost is going to be absorbed by something else. But for right now, we're going to talk about something called Newton's law of cooling. So, this is something that we're going to use when we want to figure out, uh, you know, how long it takes for something to cool, or or how much longer will it take. A, a solution to reach a certain temperature after immersing, immersing something that is hot inside the, the solution. So let's go ahead and just do a basic derivation, but let's define some variables. We're going to let H, we're going to let H, capital H, be the temperature of any object at time t. So the reason why we chose H is because H is, is, a, is a term for enthalpy, and enthalpy is basically energy and heat. So, so, so H is going to be the temperature of an object, and we will say that H of S, H of S is the constant surrounding temperature. So is the constant surrounding temperature and people say well it's not going to be constant for that long and you're right but before we immerse the the object in this room in this solution there's going to be a constant surrounding temperature h of s so so i know um i know i just went for a run so here is me and i know that as soon as i walked into my office as soon as I, i'm sorry as soon as i walked into my and in my office my office was a much cooler temperature so in my office, in my office, there was a constant temperature before I entered into it. And that constant temperature would be HS. I would have a temperature of H. I would have a temperature of H. But my office, my office, so I had to open the door to get to the office. I should do it the other way. I had to open the door to get to the office. And in order for me to get into the office, that office has a temperature that's HS. So that's what that constant surrounding temperature means. So now since we defined these three variables, our, our temperature of our object, the temperature of the environment, and then the time itself, we can then use the differential equation dH over dt is equal to negative K times the temperature of the object minus the temperature of the surrounding or the temperature of the environment. So, so now we can actually be creative. We can actually be creative with this. And we know, we know that we can take, we can go ahead and, and, and take the derivative and be very involved. But I'm not going to prove how this, uh, how this will eventually get to dy over dt equals to negative ky. That's a little bit longer and there's a lot more other videos on there. But we're eventually going to see dy over t, dt is equal to negative ky. But more importantly, we're going to eventually see that this derivation and this solution will give us the form H minus HS. Again, this is the temperature of the object, temp of object. This is the temp of surroundings. And this will equal to, this will equal to, a relationship of H naught, H naught, and this is going to be subtracted from HS, which we've not defined yet, but we'll go ahead and do that, E to the negative KT. And I'm sure we see where this E to the negative KT populates. 
So, so we have to figure out what does this H naught and this HS stand for. So, so let's go ahead and define H naught. I'm sorry, we already defined HS, but we have to define H naught. H naught is going to be the temperature, the temperature at the initial time at initial t equals to zero. So these two are the exact same thing, but H naught is the initial temperature at time equals to zero. So let's go ahead, let's go ahead and think about that. How do these two differ? People always get this question, they say, well, what, what, what temperature at the initial time what? This is going to be the temperature of the object. So this is going to be the temperature of the, the object. So let's go ahead now and use this and we will we will try an example. So let's think about um, let's think about an egg. Let's say we have an egg and this egg is boiled. It's boiled at 98 degrees Celsius. And then often as we boil an egg, we're going to immersify, we're going to immerse, not immersify, we're going to immerse the the egg in some cool water. So we're going to immerse this in some cool water and let's say this water has a temperature of 18 degrees Celsius. So so we're going to put this hard boiled egg into some water and this water has a temperature of 18 degrees Celsius. So so hopefully from there we can then recognize that our value of HS is equal to 18. So our value of HS is equal to 18. Our value, oops I lost, I hate how it does that, uh, the water which is going to be at 18 degrees Celsius. Our our initial uh, our initial enthalpy. I'm sorry. Initial heat of the object is going to be equal to a value of 98 degrees Celsius. So we put this oval egg in here, and we know that the water is going to get warmer. It's going to get slightly warmer. Not a big difference in warm, but it's going to get slightly warmer. So we have to use this in order to determine in order to determine a question. So. So uh, so let's go ahead now and say after a certain amount of time, after, let's say after uh, five minutes, after five minutes, the temperature of the egg has gone up. And let's say it's gone up to 38 degrees Celsius. So we're going to make the assumption, assume the water is only affected by the egg, only affected by the egg, then how much longer, how much longer, um, how much longer will it take, uh, will it take to reach, let's say, how long will it take to reach, let's say, how much longer will it take the egg to reach 20 degrees Celsius? So, it was at 98, after five minutes it dropped to 38, and then we want to know how much longer it's going to take to get to 20 degrees. Oh, I'm sorry, I assume the rate is only affected by the egg. So, I don't know why I just jumped there. So the question that we're going to ask is how much longer does it take the egg, which is being cooled, to reach 20 degrees Celsius? To reach 20 degrees Celsius. So let's go ahead and see what we have. So we know that we can use our equation here. H minus H of S equals to H naught minus H of S e to the negative kT. So now we can go ahead and define H. So we're going to add H of S to both sides. H of S to both sides. So we have H equals to h of s plus h naught minus h of s e to the negative kt. So let's think about what we have. We know that the initial temperature of the environment was the initial temperature of, of um, excuse me, of, uh, of the water, of the water. So the initial temperature of the water, h s, as we said before, I think we define that up here. HS was equal to 18. So we're just going to plug that in. So we get 18 plus the initial temperature of the egg was 98 degrees. We're going to subtract off 18. We get E to the negative, negative, negative KT. 
And this will give us, if we distribute, so we should have um, 18 plus 80 e to the negative kt. So we're going to have 18 plus 80 e to the negative t. So that's going to be our value of h. But we have a key, a key part. We know when h was equal to 38 degrees, the new temperature of the egg, we know this was after a time of t equals to 5. So this allows us to solve. So we know that h, which equals to 18 plus 80 e to the negative kt, this will give us 38 is equal to 18 plus 80 e to the negative 5t. Subtracting 18 on both sides, we're going to get 20 equals to 80 e to the negative 5t. We divide both sides by 80, so we get 1 quarter, which will equal e to the negative 5t. Taking the natural log of both sides, we're going to have net negative natural log of 4, which will equal to negative 5t. And dividing both sides by negative 5, we know that we're going to have t, which will equal to the natural log of 4 over a value of 5. So it's going to be the natural log of 4 over the natural log of 5. So I feel, I feel really happy. I feel really happy with this. Let's go ahead and take out our calculator and see what that time is. So we're going to have the natural log of 4. Oops, turn it on. The natural log of 4 divided by a value of 5. Now that seems a little small. Let me see. That doesn't seem right. It's going to take a little longer. Let me check my work here. Well, I think I think that's right. I think that I don't see any computation errors. So, so we're going to see that it rapidly cooled pretty fast. So it took us approximately 0.28, about 28 minutes. So, so that's uh, about a third of a minute. So 20 seconds. So, uh, so that's a pretty a pretty fair amount of time. So about 20 seconds to get down there. So now we've been able to find our our time, our time t, for us to get down there. So now we have to continue with the problem. The egg's temperature, the egg's temperature at time t is h equals to 18 plus 80, 80, um, 80 e to the a to the, we could use 0 0.28, 0 0.28 t. So now we want to find t, find t when our h value is equal to 20. So now we want to find t when our h value is equal to 20. So we're going to have 20 equals to 18 plus 80, oops, plus 80, e to the point 0.28t. So we're going to have 2 equals to 80, e to the point 0.28t. We're going to have 1 40th equals e to the point 0.28t. We're going to have negative log of 40 equals 0.28t, and dividing both sides by 0.28, dividing both sides by 0.28, let's see what we get here. We're going to have, uh, excuse me, so we will have negative ln of 40, and this will be divided, this will be divided by 0.28, and notice what do we get for time? We get a negative time. Is this possible? No, ma'am, no, sir. Remember, this is going to be a value, a value that is negative. This is a value that's negative because this is a decreasing temperature. So even though we got 0.28 to be the time, this was the time that it took to get down to that lower temperature. When we replace it back into our equation, remember, we know that this will be negative 5 times t, this thing must be negative. This must be negative. So be careful here. This will change your outcome. So always, always put in that negative. And we know that we cannot have a, a negative time. So that means that for us to get down, it's going to take approximately 13, 13 more minutes to get down to that final, final temperature of whatever we said. I think we said 20 degrees. Um, so we went from 38 to 20, and that's going to take a lot more time than it went to get from 98 to 38 degrees. So it went, it went 60 degrees. It took a 60 degree decrease in temperature in a third of a minute, and then it takes 13 more minutes to get down to 20 degrees. So we definitely see that this is not a linear relationship. 
And that's the reason why we're using a differential equation to solve.